I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, and that's my internal carotid artery right next to my internal jugular vein. Watch it get big. And right next to it is a bundle of nerves that controls how I get triggered, both emotionally and physically. That bundle of nerves is called the stellate ganglion. It's what makes your heart rate and blood pressure go up, your palms get sweaty, your pupils to dilate. It sounds like a panic attack or a PTSD flashback. It turns out that you can deactivate those nerves, literally blocking them with medications that dentists use to block the nerves that go to your teeth, like Novocaine, and you can provide profound and rapid symptom relief in patients struggling with PTSD and panic. This is the stellate ganglion block, and you see me doing it on a patient here. It's been used for about 100 years, and you're going to learn how it works, why it pairs so effectively with IV ketamine therapy, why you look like this afterwards, and what the side effects are. Let's start with how we do the stellate ganglion block. If you remember from the ultrasound, the internal carotid artery is right on top of the stellate ganglion. So 100 years ago, doctors would actually tug aside the carotid artery and put a needle through the front of the neck to numb the stellate ganglion. Later on, with the advent of x-rays, we were able to better visualize where we deposit that local anesthetic medication. And nowadays, we use the ultrasound to better visualize the nerves and the blood vessels and go from the side of the neck to safely and effectively numb the stellate ganglion. With every technological advancement, the stellate ganglion block has become safer and more effective because we can visualize where those nerves are living and where we're injecting that Novocaine-like medication. That numbing medication only sits around in your body for a couple of hours, but the symptom relief can last much longer. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You can see me with the patient here as I scan the right side of her neck. We typically start by blocking the right side of the neck because most patients find relief by blocking the right side. In some patients, we'll then block the left side a couple days later. Once I've identified the right levels to inject on the stellate ganglion, you'll see on the left side of that screen, my needle going to that site. The tremendous advantage of ultrasound is that I can visualize the other nerves in the area and the blood vessels to minimize the risk of traumatizing them as we block the stellate ganglion. This is why the ultrasound has made this procedure so much safer and faster. Once I numb these nerves, the patient will begin to feel the effects within just a couple of hours, even if the PTSD has lasted for years. Next, how does the stellate ganglion block work? The human brain learns when something new happens, whether you're reading a book or doing a science experiment. When the brain gets used to a habitual response, it gets ingrained deeper and deeper, whether it's a slot machine, a shot of whiskey, a cigarette, or even invoking your body's fear response over and over again to the same triggers. Your body's fear response is reinforced every time it is triggered. And as this happens over time, your body gets used to responding to triggers in the same way. This is caused by your sympathetic nervous system, that fight flight response that releases a surge of adrenaline or noradrenaline every time you get triggered. And if you can break that response, even for a brief period of time, your brain can now learn that there is a different way of responding to those triggers. We call this neuroplasticity, literally rewiring nerves in your brain, showing that there are different ways of thinking, different ways of responding to those triggers that once stimulated your sympathetic nervous system so strongly. Because now, when your body is exposed to that trigger, but the fight flight response is attenuated or weakened because we block the nerves in the stellate ganglion, the mind-body connection can be reset. IV ketamine also promotes a powerful neuroplasticity that can synergistically combine with the stellate ganglion block so your mind and body can learn new ways to respond to those triggers. I have many videos on IV ketamine. You can see them in the link below. The stellate ganglion block, or SGB for short, and ketamine sound like miracles, right? 
That's not true. They are not a panacea. They're not a magic bullet. The only magic, if you will, that comes out of this experience is that it can help uncover your inner healing potential. That healing potential is often blocked after years and years of betrayed trust, of trauma, either emotional or physical. And these therapies help reset your mind and body so that your innate healing capacity can be accessed again. And that healing capacity doesn't need medications as often as it might have needed before. It doesn't have the same side effects. This healing potential is uncovered when your body learns new ways to respond to these old triggers. And that is why the benefits of the SGB and IV ketamine can last months and years, long after the medications have circulated out of your body. And therapy during that window of relief from the sympathetic nervous system can fundamentally change your relationship with those triggers so that you have more mastery over them and them less over you. Put another way, water pressure builds up behind a dam. Like when you repress and suppress past memories or traumas, allowing the water pressure to rise higher and higher. Raising the dam to temporarily keep back the waves of trauma simply raises that water pressure. Therapy with SGB and IV ketamine can actually lower the water pressure behind the dam to address the root causes of trauma that may have built up over months, years, or even decades. If you're struggling with depression, anxiety, PTSD, addiction, or even chronic pain, you deserve to reaccess your inner healing potential. Patients have come to Claris Health with me in San Francisco from all over the world. And when we help them restore access to their innate healing capacity, they find lifelong learning, often without the risks of taking oral medications every day for the rest of their lives. And if you're learning something new, please hit that like button, subscribe, and share what you're learning with others. And consider joining my exclusive access group, where you can join our private Zoom streams to ask me your more personalized questions live. Click the link below and leave a comment if you've been working to heal from PTSD and share what's worked and what hasn't worked for you. Now let's move on to talk about the side effects of the stellate ganglion block. The most important side effect is Horner's syndrome. It's the physical effects of blocking the sympathetic nervous system. So we expect these effects. They only last a few hours, and they include a droopy eyelid, a constricted pupil, a stuffy nose, and a warm arm, warm hands, and warm fingers on the side that we blocked. And this should make sense to you because the sympathetic nervous system constricts blood vessels. It makes them smaller. So when we block the sympathetic nervous system, it makes the blood vessels dilate. When they dilate in your nose, it can cause congestion in a stuffy nose. When they dilate in your arms, it allows more blood to reach your hand and your fingers, and they will warm up. And these are the other reasons why we use the stellate ganglion block. Like in patients with Raynaud's syndrome, when they have icy cold hands and fingers, blocking the stellate ganglion will allow them to warm up again. Or in patients with complex regional pain syndrome, whose pain is heavily mediated by the sympathetic nervous system, and blocking the sympathetic nervous system can help profoundly decrease their pain. Blocking the stellate ganglion can also block the nerves nearby it, like the vagus nerve, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus are the nerves that go into your arm to help give you sensation and motor function of your extremity. If the Novocaine-like medication reaches these nerves, it can cause hoarseness, it can cause an elevated heart rate and blood pressure, and it may even cause a little bit of weakness in that arm. Once again though, these side effects are typically transient and only last a couple of hours if they occur. Nerve injury is always a theoretical complication with any nerve block, and you need to let your doctor know if you have any pre-existing nerve problems or neuropathies, or if you have any heart problems because of those temporary side effects that can affect your cardiovascular system. I hope you learned something new about the stellate ganglion block and IV ketamine therapy. If you or a loved one is struggling with PTSD or other mental health conditions, I hope you feel more confident to advocate for yourself to get the care that you deserve. Let me know below what other topics you want to learn about. And remember, you have more power over your health than you've probably 
ever been told.